Hey, it's Willie Armelini from Flower Consent with your industry buzz. Today we're going to interview Jay Schwanky. Jay Schwanky is uh, what I call the Pied Piper of Floral. And uh, Jay has a PBS show, uh, Life in Bloom, and he has You Bloom. So uh, Jay is going to tell us all about it. So without further ado, Jay Schwanky right here and say there is Jay Schwanky, my buddy Jay Schwanky, and, and well, not in the flesh, but anyway, in the, the digital flesh, I guess. <laughs> right. So, hey, uh, let's go uh, a little bit of history here. You and I go back a long way. Um, I know a little bit too much about you. Perhaps you were born at a flower convention. <laughs> Your mother went to labor at, in a snowstorm or something somewhere in America. Right, in, in, in Hastings, Nebraska. Yeah, for a Nebraska Floor Society meeting. Yeah. I was born in room 386 at the Hastings Hotel. So, yeah. I love it. Uh, and that sort of brought, well, you, you're a lifetime florist, I guess. Your family's in the florist business, so you grew up in the florist business. Right. I mean, you know, I always knew you, and I knew your mom. And I mean, Toots and, and, and my dad were, you know, whenever they shipped anything, my dad called Toots Armelini because that's what he was going to do, you know? I mean, that's just the way that it was. And and so we all grew up, you know, I mean, remember our vacations were SAF conventions. Exactly. That we was what we did. We and then we would, nice we would hang out, you know, so yeah. Yeah, we got to go to fancy places and nice cities and fancy hotels right. and yeah. eat out of the, uh, out of the mini bars and wipe them out. <laughs> one time, one time in French Lick, Indiana, my parents let me order room service. And so... Um, the guy brought the room service up and he said he and it was and I had ordered prime rib and lobster tails <laughs> and he was like hey are you the only one he is this for you <laughs> I was like yeah and he was like wow sweet <laughs> and then of course my dad sticker shock when that bill came you know yeah, I, no, he, said, he said order I so I ordered <laughs> who ordered that <laughs> Uh, and we have uh, crossed paths at many conventions, and uh, we did some uh, we did some time at Greenleaf together there. Basically, uh, you were nice. for them when I was working there, and and, and we uh, run to each other at airline at airports. At airports, all of a sudden, I will look over and I will recognize your hat, yes. and will be like, "Hey, there's Willie." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had some of our better conversations sitting in the airports waiting for planes. You know, absolutely right, right, right. And I look forward to some more of them. So me too. All right, here we go. Valentine's Day just ended. And uh, damn, it was a good one. It based on everything I'm hearing. Um, I'm hearing the same thing you are. And I think, you know, it's interesting. Um, I, I don't know if you saw that article in the New York Times uh, about, it was kind of an article about turning people's feelings into flowers and, and things like that. And it was, it was four or five little flower shops across the country in Queens and California and, and New Orleans. And they were talking about how our job is turning people's feelings into flowers. And that's something that we've always said, but I think now in this day and age, it's even more important. And I think, you know, when I looked at the article, it said that 1-800-Flowers reported a 44% increase over last year hmm. for that specific holiday. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal for our industry. And I think, you know, when we think about um, people can't be there and we are extending that emotion with those flowers. And I think that, you know, so many people want to talk about all the horror stories of the pandemic, but I think one of the things we're really lucky with in our industry is that this, this is, is great for us because we can turn people's feelings into flowers. That article, people talked about, you know, that they're sending more flowers for people whose pets have passed away, for funerals, for people that they just can't see, or, or sending flowers to graves because they can't be there to put flowers on the graves themselves to celebrate a, a, a life, you know? So I think that you know, I, I, the thing I keep saying to everyone, and I think that this is true, is isn't it interesting it took a global pandemic for our industry to realize what we had is so extremely valuable. Yeah, and um, I'm actually gonna blame you for this being such a good holiday. Okay, I'll I'm gonna, take it. I'm gonna blame, 
life in bloom, and I'm going to blame uh, COVID actually for this for this holiday. And and the reason I'm doing that is because, and I'm jumping a little ahead here to uh, to your show, uh, your PBS yeah. show, but it just it just ties in so nicely because I believe uh, your exposure, and after reading the comments that you sent me that you're getting from your readers or viewers, I guess in that case. Uh, God, I brought it down there, brought a tear to my eye. Um, you know, you're the... Uh... <laughs> wow, that's a big deal, Willie. <laughs> uh, no, I started to get goosebumps. I was like, damn, these are really good uh, testimonials uh, comparing you to Mr. Rogers and, and Bob... Uh, Bob Ross. Bob yeah. Ross, right. Uh, and I, while I concur, I, so you, you are, you're exposing a whole lot more people to flowers based on that those feedback i mean people right are... right i mean the the undeniable fact about that is that we're in 88 million households every week and i know that like one of the frustrations you used to be in miami miami is one of those crazy little pockets where they don't air our show oh, there's really? also a pocket like that in arizona which is odd just because you know that's kind of the epicenter of flowers a little bit in our industry at mm -hmm. least on on that coast and we're not there but we're everywhere else, you know? And um, I think perfect storm. I think the thing that you and I, we were raised in this business and our parents and our parents' contemporaries and the people that we met and the people that all influenced our life. Because sometimes people ask me, you know, like, what was your influence? What's your design influence? It's a little bit of everyone. I mean, everyone influenced the way that I am today. And the most important thing to my mom and dad was selling more flowers to more people more often, changing people's lives. And I knew that there were incredible stories for us to tell. And APT, American Public Television, took a chance on us because they were like, so you're a garden show. And I was like, no, we're not really a garden show. We're a flower, a cut flower show. And they're like, what does that mean? You know? And so then they, they took a chance on it. And this was the effect, you know? I mean, the, the other thing too is, I know that all of your viewers have seen me give a show and they're like, hmm, I don't know. When he's on stage and stuff, he's a little bit funny and he's, you know, and he's kind of loud and he's kind of, you know, and that's a complete contrast to what I am on the show. Apparently, the yeah. PBS show is toned way down. We took the volume and we, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so, it's, it's quiet, it's peaceful, and the whole show centered around the health and wellness benefit research that we've had for 20 years. Now, we had no idea when we created the second season and focused on health and wellness that the pandemic was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Our season three was done a, 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 you know, last year and it's coming out in April. So we're like a year behind, but that was, the most fortunate thing we could have ever had happen to us. It being right place, right time. And that people, you know, are sitting home and saying, hey, you know what? I am gonna, when I go to the grocery, you know, okay, so I think about this. You and I have talked about this so many times on our trips to Horty Fair and Amsterdam, how there's a different lifestyle with flowers in Europe. That people, if I'm, if I'm coming over to Willie's house, I'm bringing a, in Europe, I'm bringing a, a bouquet of flowers. And we're going to put it in a vase, or I may even arrange it, or however that's going to work. In the U.S., we bring a bottle of wine, and you know, and the, the Dutch joke about us and say that we help drink half of it. But um, you know, but at the same time, all of a sudden, America is realizing that when I go to the grocery store and I have to pick up bread and eggs and milk, I also need the flowers. And having those flowers in my home makes me feel happier less depressed, changing the water, adding water, recutting stems, whatever that ritual is that we create to be present with those flowers is improving our lives. And I think we always knew that as an industry, but this was a time when that dynamic was able to settle in and people had no choice but to listen to it and appreciate it. And I was in the right place at the right time. And so, you know, it's funny because we get, we have to get voted on by PBS too. They have to vote. So many stations have to agree to air our show for it to stay on the air. And so with two, we had a 92.75 approval rating. And so um, 
they were like, hey, enjoy this because, you know, this is your second season and everybody really likes the show, but it really doesn't get much better than this. And so when voting came in for season three, I was prepared for it to maybe be different. We went up five points. We're at 97.75 now. Ooh. And it means that people love the flowers and they love what we're doing. And it's all about the stories, as you know. I mean, we have, we have repurposed and used those California grown experiences, our Columbia experiences, our Florida experiences. And we continue to introduce people to everyday people who are, who have some little snippet of flower in their life. And we cook with the flowers, we cocktail with the flowers, we do crafts with the flowers. And that's, that's important. And, and I think it's, you know, the reason Cal Flowers is, is sponsoring season four and five, and so is Albertsons, they're in. We're still looking for sponsors too. So if I take the, the arbitrary chance to say, anybody out there listening and looking, if you want to invest in the future of our flower industry, this is a great opportunity. Because what this is about is making our industry stronger so that when people aren't forced to be home, they still want flowers in their lives at every moment. Exactly. So that's what we want to do. So that's important. I love it. I love it. Now, I, know I, I, I applaud what you're doing there. And not anybody can pull that off. And, and you did. And, and, and kudos to your sponsors, because I know that you, uh, you desperately need sponsors and, and sponsors drive the bus here. So uh, Correct. It's true. I mean, what happens with our show that's interesting is on PBS normally, when you have a television show like Antiques Roadshow or Masterpiece Theater or something like that, the stations have to pay to air that show however many times they want to air it. Okay. However, with our show, we have from the onset been involved in the APT exchange, which means that we pay that funding for distribution upfront for all stations. So everybody can air it as many times as they want to whenever they want to. And there's no cost to the station. And that's what the, the lion's share of our, of our underwriter ships go to. And interestingly enough, our show aired in April of 2019. It has been shown continuously since that date. We are coming up on 100 weeks consistently showing Life in Bloom on public television. And that's amazing. They haven't taken a break because they love it. And that's what happens with PBS. They play a show again and again and again when they can, so. Hey, uh, Jay, you're probably uh, switching gears a little bit. You're probably as sure. close the retail business as anybody here. Um, you know, I'm reading a lot, of course, online about how some of them are struggling. The, the retailers themselves have struggled, you know, during COVID. Are they open? Are they not open? Uh, where, right. where did the business go? What are, you, what are you feeling about that? What are you hearing? You know, I think it's interesting because I don't know if you if you watch that study that Texas A&M did about um, what has changed in the pandemic. There was a really Wufsa put on that uh, on that program for us, Molly Mullins and her group, and and I think it was really good because basically what it said is those of us who changed our model a little bit succeeded, figured out contactless delivery, curbside pickup beefed up our online presence because it made it easier for people to order flowers. But, and, and so I think that that was a game changer for some people, but that New York Times article, I, I posted it on the Jay Schwanke's Life in Bloom page on Facebook if somebody wants to go back and reference it. But what I loved, Willie, was these are little mom and pop shop, this little mom and pop shop in Queens that is just excelling in service. She, you know, she told the story about how people want to say more than can be written on that little card. You know, she said, people will want to, you know, give you a diatribe. And she said, I'm happy to print it off and on my computer and slip it in the envelope so that they can say as much as they want to. And one guy in New Orleans said he used to be a counselor and he's helping counsel people at the same time because their the emotional connection that they're making with the flowers is so strong and he was saying that this the pet thing he was talking about the pet thing how you know you and i are both dog guys we we get this right and when something happens to our pets it you know it's it's a family member and he said you know i i counsel them and say just say sending much love and an ellipsis that's all that's all you need to say you don't need to bring it up again or anything. Just say sending much love and the flowers express that. 
And I think it, people who are struggling, if, if you have that question in your life, we're struggling right now, are you, are you embracing everything we are? that we are counselors, that we are people who turn people's feelings into flowers, that we offer convenience and safety and comfortability. Uh, are they able to order online on their own schedule? You know, is, is, are those things all friendly? And I think those might be the people who are struggling a little bit more is who haven't cracked that code yet. Because I also know some people who have, who are doing more business than they've ever done before. I had a friend who opened a flower shop in the middle of the pandemic because she saw that she saw that that the nurturing nature that was needed with flowers and she's being very successful so you know i, I don't know i i think that's my that's my opinion on that so okay. what's a j bouquet uh j's bouquets are um uh, it, it is a uh it's a carefully curated collection of flowers that are long lasting and have a story behind them. They are created uh, by Sunshine Bouquet and they are distributed at Albertsons companies throughout the US and other grocery stores now are, are picking up Jay's Bouquets as well. So, um, and you know what, they're also available to, the one thing somebody said to me, they said, oh, what if I'm a florist and I wanna carry them? Call Sunshine Bouquet. It's a real simple, real simple solution. They can ship them to you too. But it's just a way for uh, me to tell some stories with flowers and, and create people's experiences. One of the goals of the of the TV show is to make people comfortable with flowers so they're not scared. And I think that um, we need to give them beautiful, beautiful flower arrangements that maybe tell a little story and are are long lasting. So that's where it is. Uh, well, yeah, and I concur because you have carnations in just about every one of those, if I'm not mistaken. I can't go any other way than do that. I mean, there's carnations and chrysanthemums in every single bouquet. And my family's business, we, at one point in time, we had seven acres under glass in Nebraska and we grew carnations and chrysanthemums. So um, JD, my friend JD, who at, at Deli Floor, um, that many of their chrysanthemums are in our bouquets and um, the carnations that they grow and curate an incredible collection at Sunshine. And so there's not only regular carnations, but spray carnations. And then like the little, the little mini micro ones that are like Ruffinis and the butterfly ones that are really fun too. So um, I, and I think, you know, when you, when you sit back and at the end of the day, I like waves and bouquets. So you pull out some stuff and then you're sitting there with a chrysanthemum and carnation bouquet that lasts for two weeks, maybe three. Yeah, you pretty There's much something yeah. very rewarding about that for the experience from the consumer. No, and I think uh, we, you know, we've gotten so rose centric, and well, let's face it, roses are just going to last as long. I mean, your spray roses maybe, but the, your classic rose, you know, if you get a um, week, they're good. I think you know. Well, well, and interestingly enough, though, some of the roses that are available there um, that are in those bouquets, I've had last two weeks, really? and I think that has a lot to do with our care and handling. And I, one of the, one of the primary missions on any of the videos that I do on my YouTube channel, on you bloom in life in bloom is educating about how to use, you know, our chrysal sachets and how to measure accurately and use cold water and cut with the correct tool. And we've thought for so long, it was simple and it's not once, you know, and it's kind of like when you cook, you know, I've become an incredible cook in this pandemic. Willie, I can make some really fancy stuff now. Mm -hmm. And once I know the tricks, it's delicious. But if I don't follow the recipe, man, it is a disaster. So I just want to help people follow the recipe. So, no, I think that's that's true. And, and the long lasting flowers, uh, we know what they are. Um, right, 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 right. You know where to get them. So you uh, assign them to. Okay, so how about trends? The last thing, because 20 minutes goes fast here. What about the trends? I know, right, it does. Okay, so um, I think plants, okay? We have a show coming out in season three all about plants and the health and wellness benefits of plants. It's the same. It's very similar to what we experience with flowers, but that they purify the air, caring for them, gives us a nurturing effect, talking to your plants. I got in trouble the other day because I did not state the entire research there, there is funded research that was done at Rutgers University about plants. If you play classical music to your plants, it will encourage them to grow and bloom. However, there are some types of music that will cause them to even not, not thrive and ultimately may even kill them. 
and that is heavy metal and acid rock. <laughs> that has nothing to do with my preferences of music whatsoever. I'm just stating the facts of a study. So I think that that's important. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, and that's okay. If we love it, that's all right. Just don't play it for your amaryllis if you're trying to get it to bloom. That's all I'm saying, you know? So, yeah. Um, health and wellness. Obviously, we have adopted health and wellness of flowers in for all seasons going forward. But I think that that's still going to be paramount. Um, sunflowers. You know, I think it's interesting. So, I'm curious. Do you remember what the color of the year last year was at Pantone? Hell no. Me either, exactly, I agree, me either, I forgot, I don't care. And, but I do think that yellow is important and I could have almost bet money that yellow was gonna come out this year. So um, I think sunflowers or any yellow flowers really increases the positivity factor in our, in our lives. We have, a, we have a Jay's bouquet called Daybreak that's all yellow. And my dad's favorite color was yellow. And he was always that guy who was so positive. And so I think the positivity of that is good. I don't know why the gray's in there. I mean, that's just personal opinion for me, but nobody needs gray right now. I, we are on our, what, 400th gray Michigan day today. <laughs> I don't know what it is, you know, but I don't need more gray in my life, but I certainly need more sunshine. And then nature centered, I think. So, you know, um, experiencing more nature. I have been able to watch my garden through all four seasons now and be here with it. And you know, Willie, you and I traveled as much as each other. I've not had that opportunity in my life yeah. to sit here for four seasons and watch my garden do its thing. So I'm much more in tune with that and I really like it. And I think, you know, the, the gardening aspect of, of people creating gardens and victory gardens and things like that is on a huge explosion. Our people in the, in the nursery business uh, had a very good year last year and they're gearing up for another great one this year. And I think that that's gonna be important too. And so, you know, planting a cutting garden, our, our first episode is about the, our pilot episode for season three is about the flower farms, uh, the flower fields with Michelle Castellano in, in Oxnard, but then creating your own flower field in your yard that you can cut from to make arrangements. And I think that, you know, that interaction, I think is going to be important. So, so nature centered, maybe a little more centered on what we do. So. Well, Jay Schwenke, um, we, we have blown through a, probably a half hour over here already. So. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so as Jay, no, Jay I, says, if you're going to have Jay, get more time. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing and I will allow it. And uh, and then uh, I think there's not much editing for me to do. So uh, I, I will run this and get it out next week, I believe. Awesome. So you we, are, you, you're amazing, Willie. Yeah, um, I am, I am thankful that in my world, there are Willie Armelini and people like you that, that know when to play the harmonica for me to get me to shut my mouth. And that who is a friend that when I see you across the airport, it's, it's like my brother. It's like seeing somebody I haven't seen in a long time. And what Flowers and Scents does for our industry is keeps us right on the pulse, right on the pulse of what's happening. So keep up the good work. It's, it's a trek. Every week, I read, your, I read your newsletter in your voice in my head. You hear it. Okay. And I hear you. So I, I love it. I love it. That's All right, my friend. friend. Well, thank you for your time. And I will get this out. And it's been a pleasure seeing you and talking to you again. And I hope to do it to flesh pretty soon. I agree. I think it'll be awesome. Thanks, Willie. Right. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.